You know, I really like tea. What's up everybody? I'm Kess, and today I'm going to review every different version of Doom 64, and at the end of the video I'm going to conclude with which one I think is the absolute best. Now if you have an opinion on which version you think is the absolute best, feel free to share it in the comments. Alright, let's begin. While playing the original version that released in 1997 is undeniably the most authentic way to experience the game, 25 years later, it's probably the worst option on the list. Even assuming you already own the Nintendo 64 system, the cartridge for the game is relatively expensive. And even if you already own the cartridge, I still wouldn't recommend this option simply because I wouldn't want you to have to put up with the controller. Unless you're just some sort of purist, there are far better options available to you. And if you are a purist, well, might I recommend a CRT television for maximum authenticity? You have fun. The rest of us are going to move on to... Doom 64 Absolution, also known as Doom 64 Total Conversion, was the first real way to play Doom 64 on PC. It was made by a team of modders led by Kaiser, who extracted the material from the Doom 64 ROM and ran it on a customized version of the Doomsday Engine. Not only does this version add six new levels to the already existing 32 level campaign, but it's also had some other map sets released for it, including Kaiser's Outcast levels, which came out in 2005. Anyone with Doom 2 could now play this version of Doom 64 on their computer. I think this version deserves a lot of respect, because without it, the vast majority if not all of the other mods probably wouldn't exist. It should be revered as the grandfather of Doom 64 on PC, but like a grandfather, it also really shows its age at this point. For example, if you install the game anywhere else besides the C drive, it will crash upon launch. It also has very limited support for newer resolutions, only going up to 1600 by 1200 and I personally found that I couldn't raise the resolution above the default 640x480p without the mod also crashing. And even despite these issues, the fact remains that there's still just far better ways to play the game now. This version is simply obsolete. Though funny enough, I did find this thread on Doom World from someone who claims to be remastering this version, so that's cool I guess. <laughs> In 2008, five years after Absolution came out, Kaiser released Doom 64 EX. This particular source port is essentially a glorified emulator for Doom 64, as Kaiser did a ton of reverse engineering in order to get this to run as closely at the original as possible, while at the same time adding a ton of quality of life improvements and fixing little bugs and inconsistencies. This time, instead of needing Doom 2, you actually have to have the ROM for the Nintendo 64 cartridge of the game, and then convert it over to an iWOD using the included WODGEN tool. The work that was done on this version is absolutely incredible, and the difference in quality between this and Absolution? I mean, take a look at this. This is the last room of the first level in Doom 64 running on the Absolution total conversion. Now this is the same room in Doom 64 EX. Isn't that incredible? Doom 64 EX also supports all modern resolutions. You can uncap the frame rate, and let me tell you, it looks glorious at 144 FPS. You can even turn off auto aim and turn on mouse look if you're so inclined, which I really appreciated. And the proverbial cherry on top, this source port comes with a level builder. For over a decade, this was the definitive way to play Doom 64, and you can still have an awesome experience with it to this day. But what if I told you that there's an even better option? So the story behind the official remaster of Doom 64 is actually a really cool one. In 2015, Kaiser got a job as a developer at Night Dive Studios. A small team primarily known for buying the rights to Abandonware titles, touching them up and then re-releasing them for modern platforms. They did this with the original Strife game and were the ones responsible for Strife Veterans Edition. 
In 2019, Bethesda announced that Doom 64 was going to be re-released on all modern consoles and also on PC. And of course, Night Dive was the team responsible for this remaster. And that's exactly what it was, a remaster, even though it wasn't marketed as such. Much like Doom 64 EX, this is a proper version that's true to the source material while having tons of quality of life improvements and better controls. Comparing the two versions side by side, they're actually very similar, which would make sense given that Kaiser was involved in the development of both versions. Speaking of Kaiser, he made a post not long after the game came out on his blog going over what the exact differences were between Doom 64 EX and the new release. Most of his technical jargon, so I'm not going to read it here, but I'll have it linked down below if you guys want to check it out. There are a few little differences that I did notice when playing this for myself though. For one, the animations seem a lot smoother in the 2020 version than they do in EX, even though they're both running at the exact same frame rate. It's far easier to move the gun to look around and shoot with. Also, I don't know what exact changes they've made to the lighting, but it's seen a noticeable improvement. Not as stark of a difference as the jump from Absolution to EX, of course, but still a change nonetheless. Going back to that last room again, here's what it looks like on Doom 64 EX, and this is the official 2020 version. Sadly, in order to keep this port as vanilla friendly as possible, the option to turn off auto aim and use mouse look has been removed. But, in order to make up for it, this version contains a brand new expansion called The Lost Levels, a set of six new levels also developed by Kaiser. And they're pretty decent. They also add in a brand new fun level. Oh! <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, there's achievements. Steam achievements. Ah, you know what? I can live with the auto-aim. In all seriousness, this version of Doom 64 is absolutely fantastic. I don't think they could have done a better job if they had wanted to. And there you have it guys, this is the best way to play Doom 64. Accessible on any console or computer for the low price of $5. And on sale it regularly goes for $1.50, and this past week it was being given away for free on the Epic Games Store. Well, Cass, if this is the best version to play, then shouldn't the video be over? Why is it only halfway done? Well, if you've already played the official remaster, you're probably curious about all the modded versions, right? Oh. As best I can tell, GZ Doom 64 is the first attempt that was made at porting Doom 64 over to the Z Doom engine. The first version of this came out in 2015. The version you're seeing me play here in this video is from 2018, version 2.1. I gotta give Nightside some credit here. This was a very ambitious project, and at the time, it was the first of its kind. That being said, and I cannot stress this enough, you should not play this version. I hesitate to call this the worst version of Doom 64 because it's running on GZ Doom, it supports modern resolutions and frame rates. From a technical standpoint, it's far better than Absolution. In fact, when everything is working correctly, because of the way GZ Doom's lighting works, parts of these levels actually can look really, really good. But the problem is, this was never finished. The project was abandoned. And even though some parts look pretty good, there are far many more that look absolutely awful. Let's go back to that final room again. This is from the 2020 remaster. And this is from GZ Doom 64. Ugh, I really don't want to play this anymore. One cool thing about this mod is that when you start a new campaign, it shows this custom intro screen. You can see it's got some revenants and arch files walking around on it, so I can only presume that they're in this version of the game as well. Oh. So a year after GZ Doom 64 made its debut, Sergeant Mark IV released Brutal Doom 64. In addition to bringing the game to GZ Doom and also Xandronum for multiplayer, this mod adds a ton of new effects in lighting, fog, atmosphere, animations, blood, Adds in new enemies, adds in cut content, all kinds of neat stuff. 
If you've played Brutal Doom before, you probably have a good idea of what this is like. It's essentially Doom 64 combined with old school mode. Same weapons, generally the same gameplay, improved graphics and animations. Now while I generally like playing with Brutal Doom, and I do think that this is a good mod, I personally don't really care for it. While some of the visual changes are nice, especially the fog, I feel that the Brutal Doom formula kind of clashes with the more creepy aesthetic that Doom 64 is going with. It's a nice change of pace though, and you might enjoy it if you're a big fan of Brutal Doom, or if you're one of those people who finds Doom 64 a little bit dull. Me personally though, I'd rather stick to regular Brutal Doom. That being said, I'd almost like to recommend everybody go out and download this if only just to check out the intro. Before you start the regular Doom 64 campaign, you're running up a hill and through a compound during an invasion with a ton of other marines. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Brutal Doom 64 also includes three new difficulties on top of the four that come with the base game. You have Hardcore, which is the equivalent to Black Metal in the regular Brutal Doom. You also have an easy and hard version of Survival Horror, which is this mod's version of Nightmare Mode. If you do want to play with this mod, then I would recommend that you avoid the Brutal Doom 64 executable that comes bundled in it when you download it from ModDB as it's based on an old version of Xandronum that doesn't support resolutions over 720p. Instead, you can open up the skins folder here and drag and drop these files onto a modern installation of Xandronum. Or GZ Doom if you're just going to play by yourself. <coughs> the GEC Master Edition is a fork of GZ Doom which was released by Team GEC in 2017. The main goal of this project seems to be to create a version of GZ Doom that was optimized for PlayStation Doom and Doom 64, while also adding new features created specifically for these releases. This resulted in a really good version of Doom 64, arguably the most vanilla and true the source experience available on GZ Doom yet. When you start the mod, you're given a choice of four different ways to run it. There's normal mode, which is the mode you're seeing me play in this video. There's Bright Maps mode, which I personally can't see any difference in. There's Lights mode, which adds in dynamic lighting effects for item pickups, shots fired from enemy weapons, and enhanced barrel explosions, to name a few. This is a fine example of a mod that I appreciate on a technical level. It did a lot to get these releases running properly on GZ Doom, and serves as an excellent base for others to build off of, which is exactly what has happened. That being said, I honestly can't recommend this version just simply for playing Doom 64 off of, because from a player's perspective, there's really nothing that exceptional about it. Some of the lighting improvements are nice, but as a general rule, this version is more washed out and bland looking than some of the other ones in this video. While it definitely deserves an honorable mention, there's really no extra goodies here to tempt you to go download it and try it out. But if you are looking for extra goodies, then you're gonna love Around the same time as the release of the GEC Master Edition, another fellow named Navander was making his own adaptation of Doom 64 for GZ Doom, titled Doom 64 Retribution. The goal of this mod is to serve as an enhanced version of Doom 64, not as derivative as Brutal Doom, but not entirely vanilla either. This is probably one of the most impressive mods in this whole video, in terms of everything that's been added here. For example, other than maybe Brutal Doom 64, this is the first mod that actually plays like it's running on GZ Doom. The shotgun no longer fires like a stiff piece of cardboard, and the custom animation that's been included really helps sell that. Enemy behavior has also changed a little, and in my opinion, improved quite a bit. Definitely not very vanilla friendly changes to say the least, but enhancements to be sure. The lighting is arguably better in places, but in other spots, not so much. Just like GEC, the enemy's muzzles flash when they fire, and the barrels have that same improved fire animation. For the most part, everything looks pretty good. There's also two new difficulty modes added in Retribution. Hardcore is essentially Doom 64 Nightmare. Fast monsters are enabled, you take more damage, and they respawn after a certain period of time. 
Next is Doom Slayer difficulty, which you think would be harder since it's lower on the list. But having played with it for a bit, as far as I can tell, the only major change other than taking more damage is that pinkies have been turned into specters. So yeah. What really stands out about this mod is all the bonus content that it contains. The six original levels from Doom 64 Absolution have been ported over here, as well as the Outcast expansion that Kaiser released for that same mod. There's also Redemption Denied, another 2005 map set made for Absolution. Although this one was made by a couple of guys named Steven Searle and Agent Spork. Now the fact that Navander converted all those old expansions over to work with his mod is already impressive enough, but on top of that, he made a special little hub map so that you could access the fun maps in the main campaign easier, as well as access two extra bonuses that he's included here. The first bonus is the intro screen as a playable map. Now I've already covered this before in another video, which you can check out if you want to. The other special bonus is a testing facility. This one will act as not only a museum for everything that's featured in Doom 64, but also as an armory for all the weapons, a supply house for all the different power-ups, and an arena area where you can battle all the various enemies that you want to, or make them battle one another in monster versus monster battles in any combination that you choose. This is cool enough to feature an entire video all on its own, which I'll probably make in the future. It's pretty incredible all the amazing changes that have been made to the game with this mod. I've barely scratched the surface with just what I've covered here in the video. You can find a list of features in the mod's download page, but by far my favorite has to be the inclusion of a new text screen whenever you go to start a campaign that tells the story so far as written in the game's original manual. As incredible as this mod is, it definitely does have a few drawbacks. I've already mentioned the lighting irregularities that you'll sometimes witness, but what I didn't tell you is that by default the mod also contains some new music and sound effects for background ambiance. You might care for some of the changes in here, but I certainly do not. Other than that, the only real drawback to this mod is just its age. Navander released the last update for this, version 1.5, in late 2018, and hasn't really done anything with it since. Not that I blame him, he certainly has enough other stuff to do. And to be honest, it's unnecessary. Because... <laughs> if you thought it couldn't get any better than Doom 64 Retribution, you have to check out Doom 64 CE. Released in 2021, not only is this the most recent mod in the collection, it's built on the work of all the ones that came before it. Primarily Retribution and GEC Master Edition. Like Master Edition, this mod has four starting feature presets from which to choose from. There's Faithful, which gives you the most vanilla accurate version of the mod. There's Faithful Enhanced, the one that I'm using. For this, gameplay is largely left unchanged. But things like lighting, animations, particles and trails, not to mention sound effects, have all seen noticeable enhancements and improvements. The next setting down is Modern, which adds in some monsters that were not found in the original Doom 64 campaign, such as Sergeants and Archviles, although I've yet to encounter those. This setting also makes adjustments to the player speed to help compensate for the fact that you're using a keyboard and a mouse. The last preset is experimental. Supposedly there's new visual changes in this, but I didn't notice any. The only real change I noticed is that the campaign now included a real soundtrack. <laughs> Compared to Retribution, CE's lighting changes feel far more consistent and complete. That, combined with the upscale textures, make for a very visually pleasing experience, as well as one that feels good and is fun to play. While not every area of every map looks as good as the official remaster, many of them actually look better in some ways. Speaking of which, CE requires a valid Doom 64 iWatt file in order to run. Assuming you have a copy of the 2020 release of Doom 64, either on Steam or the Epic Games Store or whatever, 
Simply install it to your computer and use the included install.batch file that comes with the mod and voila, you are good to go. Doing it this way allows you to play the new Lost Levels campaign within this mod. And as far as I'm aware, this is the only mod that actually supports it. In addition, the Fun Maps hub has been updated with a new portal leading to Panic, the fourth fun level added in the re-release. Also added in are four new bonus maps, Waste Processing and Mining Front by a fellow named Maverick, and Temple Ruins and Temple Grounds by Henry Leto. All the extra content in Retribution has been retained here as well, including Redemption Denied, as well as the Absolution and Outcast levels, which have been repackaged together here under the name The Doomsday Levels. There's also The Reckoning, another Steven Searle map set designed for the Absolution Total conversion. There is a ton of community content to go through here, as well as other community created projects that aren't included in the base download but have been converted to work with this mod and are available as optional add-ons, such as this recreation of Knee Deep in the Dead that I really need to play. The quality on this mod is completely unrivaled, and it's still receiving updates and tweaks, the last one of which was just a month ago. If you haven't checked this one out, you absolutely need to. It'll improve your Doom 64 experience in just about every single way. That being said, there's still one more other mod that I need to talk about. Oh. Alright, I have a question for you. About how often would you say that you sit around and think, gee, I wish Doom 64, instead of trying to have its own style, was just an expansion pack of levels for Doom 2, like Final Doom. Everything. There you go! <laughs> well, you're in luck. Say hello to Doom 64 for Doom 2. Released in 2018, this mod was in production for 62 months and received contributions from 20 mappers, including Navander. The result is a really clever reimagination of what this game would look like if it was made with Doom 2 assets. The mod's text file notes that some creative liberties were taken when redesigning the levels. For example, in Map 1, the secret exit is non-existent. Well, that's fine, I don't need it anyway, I can just access Hectic through the console. That's odd, I don't remember an invulnerability sphere at the start of this room. And I certainly don't remember all these mancubi either. Yes sir, this ain't your grandma's Hectic. For real though, this is a neat take on Doom 64. I feel like it's in a category all on its own, so I can't really recommend for or against it, but it certainly deserves an honorable mention here. Whether or not it's worth your time downloading is really up to you. If you've never played Doom 64, you should get the remastered version and take it for a spin. Play through the campaign, unlock all the achievements, put in a nice round number like 18 hours, then download Doom 64 CE and check out all the cool community content that's been made for this game. Or just do what you want.